Came through dripping aquafina, I'm sipping 15, kept a weapon on me. Flow make digits, I mind my bed and stack chicken like what it's gon' be. Crew in the cut, hey, you want us rep run when I tell a big piece. Love is love. Love is love. Adios. Don't be done with the switch again. Boy, they look like we happening. I don't know what they just give them estimates. Summer sauce for my Benjamins. I got, I got what you need, baby. Turn the chef, make the scene, baby. I like BB, been the team, baby. Then they pop up with the team, baby. Love. Love is love. What's up guys, it's Dramon. We're in the gym, putting in work and shooting some stuff for this video, which you're about to watch. But we are doing so and for the Jordan 34. Now this is a sneaker that I wasn't really too excited about. I mean, I look forward to the Jordans every year, but I wasn't really looking forward to this, mainly because of how the 33s performed last season. I did not like that shoe at all. However, this time around, there's some things that Jordan Brand did with this sneaker that kind of directly answers some of the criticisms that we had of the 33s. But at $180, which officially makes these one of the more expensive sneakers on the market, is it worth that price and your time? Should you pick these up? That is what we're going to answer with today's performance review, which is sponsored by the Seasons Creator Premium Game Ball. The Seasons Creator Premium Game Ball has been my go-to indoor basketball for quite some time now, thanks to its use of premium materials and of course, the handful of unique colorways that Season has available on their site right now. The colorway I have here is called the X's and O's, and I absolutely love it because it has my three favorite colors, red, black, and white. If you're looking to pick up a new basketball or just want one that'll look like nothing else in the gym so nobody steals it, go ahead and check out Season with the link in the description box below. Okay, so the Jordan 34. Now, usually I start these reviews talking about a single feature that really stood out to me, whether it's a good feature or a bad feature. But with the Jordan 34, this is a very interesting shoe because the thing that stood out to me the most with these was actually its entire package and how everything in the shoe is connected to each other and how it all works together to make a seamless experience. I mean, if you just look at the shoe itself on a surface level, it's a pretty straightforward sneaker. There isn't any gimmicks or overwhelming or overpowering features, except you could maybe say that this Eclipse plate, which is that big gaping hole in the midfoot, does look a little gimmicky, but it is a unique design visually. However, its functionality in terms of how it performs, it's actually a very sound design. The Eclipse plate is essentially the evolution of the flight plate system that we all love from the Jordan 28 and 29, but what makes these different is the cord out design, which forms a cove that allows the large zoom unit in the forefoot to compress and move without restraint. Okay, but what does that actually mean and how does it feel when you're playing in them? Well, what it means is that forefoot zoom unit, which is already massive, is going to feel extremely springy, which just adds to the lightweight nature of the shoe itself. And it feels very nice when you're attacking the basket. And also that Eclipse plate, which is what we talked about earlier, it kind of acts like a bridge that connects the two zoom units, one in the heel and one in the forefoot. And while it's not quite as smooth as a full length zoom setup, it gets pretty damn close. And it really feels like a full length zoom setup, but what you lose with smoothness, you gain back with explosiveness anyways. So if you're looking for something that's going to give you that extra pop when you're attacking the basket or gliding down the court, it really doesn't get any better than the Air Jordan 34. And I'd go as far as to say that this is a top three cushion setup that I've ever used. Another standout feature that I really enjoyed with these was the traction. Now, Jordan Brand stuck with what works and uses a multi-directional herringbone pattern that provides coverage in all areas. And the rubber compound that they use is also fairly tacky, which means you'll get solid coverage on a variety of core conditions. However, it isn't quite A plus traction. It's more like an A minus. A plus traction, it works no matter what court you're playing on. You just lace them up and you're sticking all over the place. You're squeaking all the time. 
but with these there were a couple of courts where i did have to wipe frequently or else i would have some minor slips and slides but again nothing major it was just some minor little inconsistencies but overall i do think the traction on these is a safe bet so if you're looking for something that's just going to work and be reliable i do feel safe recommending this kind of setup and for me personally i really enjoyed the traction i felt like i could pull off all my moves without any hesitation and there were even some times where i felt like i was quicker than i actually was i mean i was able to stop on a dime with these and change direction in a blink of an eye so for that fact alone the jordan 34 is going to be in my gym bag for a very long time because i know i can rely on the traction on pretty much any floor that i play on now but the traction and cushion are two things that i think pretty much anyone who picks these up is going to love and have a lot of fun with the rest of the shoe is not really going to be for everyone the materials that Jordan use are a lightweight synthetic mesh with small premium hints that don't really add much to the performance, but it's nice to see them on there anyways. But the synthetic mesh upper does do a lot to reduce weight and provide an ultra lightweight feel that is also very well ventilated. The problem is that not everybody is going to dig this lightweight construction. I mean, even myself, when I was tying these up super tight, I almost felt like I was going to break the materials. I mean, they're very thin, they're very light. It's just not the most robust setup. So if you're looking for extra protection around your foot, the materials that Jordan Brand use here are just not the best option for that. What Jordan Brand was trying to go for here was a lightweight feel that stays very close to your foot. And I have to say, they absolutely nail it in that respect. But like I said earlier, that's just not going to be for everyone. It's kind of an acquired taste. And for someone like myself personally, who really loved this kind of setup, when someone would step on my foot, I definitely felt it more than I would with the setup that had a more robust material. So you just gotta keep in mind that this is a very performance driven model, which means that sometimes you're sacrificing soft comfort for speed and weight reduction. And that also in turn, kind of has an effect on the support of this shoe. Due to the Eclipse plate, your foot kind of sits high in the Jordan 34 and that coupled with the fact that the materials are extremely lightweight means that the support isn't as sturdy as you might expect from a shoe that Zion Williamson is apparently going to be wearing. I want to go as far as to say that the support in these is bad or lackluster. I just think it's a different flavor. It's an acquired taste that I think is going to work best for players who are fast and prefer a minimal setup. I mean, even for someone like myself, I felt like a little bit of give when I was moving side to side in these and just a little slight feeling that my foot was rolling over the footbed. So if you're someone who doesn't like to have that feeling, you're probably going to have to look somewhere else or maybe pop an ankle brace on. I think an ankle brace would fit fine with the 34s. But the good news is with the support, since all of this minimalism is going on, you have a lot of range of motion because this heel is decoupled which means that if your forefoot is moving in different directions, it can do so freely without having any restraint from the rest of the shoe, in particular the heel. And all of that, again, plays into the overall fast nature of the 34s itself. Now, as for the fit, I went true to size in these, and I think most people are gonna wanna do that as well. I mean, Jordan Brown was really trying to go for a close to the foot feel here. So if you try these on and you think that they're maybe just a little too snug, I would actually play in these and break them in and give them some time to soften up around your foot. Because again, Jordan Brand was going for that close to the foot feel. But if you try these on and you instantly know that this is just gonna be way too suffocating, I think going up half a size is a decent option because you have this traditional lacing system, which means you can adjust the lacing in different areas, which means that even if you do have some dead space by going up half a side in the sidewall or the forefoot, that lacing system should be able to lock you down quite well and eliminate any internal sliding that you may experience. So to wrap things up, the Jordan 34 is easily my favorite hoop shoe of 2019. To me, it's a direct successor to my favorite hoop shoe of all time, the Air Jordan 29. And what I love most about that shoe was when you looked at it, it looked like a straightforward sneaker, but when you played in them, you realized that there was a lot going on with the performance and the design internally. And I got that same feeling here with the Jordan 34. I mean, besides this Eclipse plate, which by the way, I think looks awesome visually, the Jordan 34 looks kind of like a plain, straightforward performance basketball sneaker. And I think that's the biggest takeaway that you can get from these. I think Jordan Brand just wanted to make a sneaker that was fun to play basketball in. And when I was playing in these, 
I was having a lot of fun. So that's why I'm gonna be keeping these in the gym bag for a very long time. That's why this is my favorite hoop shoe of 2019. And that's why I'm definitely going to be picking up a second pair of these despite it being one of the higher priced shoes on the market. Sometimes a shoe comes along and it just makes a sport that you already love even more fun to play in. The Jordan 34 is definitely one of those sneakers. Don't forget to let me know in the comment section below whether or not you're gonna be picking up a pair of Air Jordan 34s. I mean, if you can't tell by the review, I highly recommend it. And if you enjoyed this performance review, please drop this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more reviews just like this. My name is Jaren, it's great having you. I'm gonna go play basketball. Get you in the next one. Peace.